we've set aside for calling. I would like to call your attention then uh, to Jesus Christ this morning. Let's let's focus on Him. Uh, I want to. I would uh, call your attention to Jesus. What Jesus has to say, as opposed to what anybody else has to say. Of I want to. I want to call your attention to Jesus. Uh, men have a word, but you know, and they can say things, but we don't know. Uh, they, what they say is it could be right, or what they say could be wrong. You know, and, uh, that's when men are talking, uh, but we just don't know. But uh, when we look to the Lord, what the Lord has said, we know what He says what's right. So we we want to defer to Him. And uh, the Lord says, uh, you know, the, the kingdom of God is likened unto. Well, then you can bet your money that's the way the kingdom of God is. We might say, hey, the manner of the kingdom is this. A man might say, the manner of the kingdom is this. The manner of the kingdom is that. It might be right. It may not be. But when Jesus says the manner, well, we know. Now, I'd like to go over to um, John 18.37. And this is uh, accounts given by the apostle uh, John. And you'll recognize this account right off the bat. This is when Jesus is standing before Pilate. Now, I want to look at this a moment this, this morning and let this uh, uh, encourage you and edify you. Now, Jesus is standing before Pilate at this time. And it's already, it's early in the morning, early, but just right after daybreak. He's already been before the Sanhedrin. And he's already made a good confession to the high priest there. And now he's standing before Pilate, his first time before him. In verse 37, Jesus is brought inside the palace before the judgment seat. He left the religious leaders outside. They wouldn't come in there this morning. And so he get, Jesus is by himself in front of Pilate. Pilate wants to talk to him. And uh, verse 37 is a part of the exchange. This whole thing is an exchange between Pilate and Jesus. And the verse I wanted to read for you this morning is verse 33 Pilate therefore said unto him, Jesus, art thou a king? And Jesus answered, Thou sayest I am a king. To this end I was born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Now we've been talking about this morning, this, so we want to jump right into this pretty easy. To, to this Pilate replied, What is truth? And with this he cut the conversation short and left. He didn't care enough to stick around long enough to find out if Jesus would answer him or not. He just, he let God up and left, you remember. Jesus was annoyed, at, uh, Pilate was annoyed at Jesus' answer. Uh, it made his decision even more troubling. And Pilate was annoyed, again, at having to deal with some controversy regarding the Jewish religion this early in the morning. He was annoyed about that. He was annoyed because, contrary to the Jews' claim, Pilate knew that Jesus didn't pose any threat to the Roman authorities. Pilate was annoyed. There was going to be no way out, no good way out of this politically. He was to keep peace with these troublesome Jews. Pilate knew he was going to have to condemn Jesus to death, a man he knew that was innocent. But now Jesus is just arm's length away from the cross, you see. Now listen to how bold Jesus is right in front of this man, Pilate. Yes, I am a king. And I have a kingdom, and to this end I was born, and for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. My kingdom is a kingdom of truth. I reign in truth and righteousness, Jesus said. Jesus is giving testimony to the truth, brethren, right here. For us, even at this time, I want to draw your attention to this. This response from Jesus flies right over the head of Pilate. You see, when he don't get it at all. Jesus is not really speaking to Pilate, though, is he? He's not. Uh, Pilate is not of the truth. He doesn't hear Jesus' words. Jesus is really speaking to the truth of the kingdom of God. He's speaking to those who belong to it, who Jesus is talking to. Jesus is giving testimony, brethren. He's, in testi he's indeed testifying to who he is. And uh, he's doing this to the highest authority in the land. And he's testifying for all of us. Uh, for all them who hear his voice will hear the witness of the truth that Jesus is giving right here. Jesus prepares, earlier we've seen that Jesus has prepared his disciples for this very thing, for this testimony I'm talking about. Remember in John 14, Jesus is speaking of his soon departure. He's going to be leaving soon in John 14. 
and the disciples are all troubled, Jesus is talking about leaving them. And you're familiar with this account too. Jesus tells them, let not your hearts be troubled. If you believe in God, believe also in me. If I go, I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that Jesus tells them. Jesus is preparing them. I will come again and receive you unto myself. And when he continues to say, Right after that, he says, where I'm going, ye know, and the way ye know. And remember, Thomas says, we don't, uh, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? You remember that? And yeah. then Jesus gives that very famous, very uh, uh, <clears throat> important verse. He's, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, and no man cometh to the Father but by me. Now, the answer to Thomas' question is, I'm the way, Thomas. I'm the way. But he adds also this some more information about that I'm the truth and the life. And Jesus is saying here, as I understand it, that this, this way that I am, I'm the way, it consists of truth and it consists of life. That's what the way is all about, Thomas, truth and life. And uh, it tells us something. It, it tells us what Jesus is all about. I'm the truth and I'm the life. I'm the absolute source for both. If you're coming for truth and life, you've you got to come to me. Jesus has life within himself, actually. That's how he could say in John 6, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world, because he is, he is the life. And Jesus, he is the truth. This is how knowing Jesus will set a man free, because he's the truth, you see. That, <clears throat> that I should bear witness unto the truth, and everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. It is the voice of the shepherd speaking that we understand in John 10. <clears throat> this and the sheep are the ones who um, hear the truth of Jesus. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them, you see. To him the porter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and he leadeth them out. And when he put forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger they will not follow. You see what I'm saying? but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. And other sheep I have. See how much Jesus talked about this. Which are not of this fold, them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. There ain't no getting around this, is it, brethren? There are those who have an ear for the voice of Jesus. They have an ear for the truth, <clears throat> because the truth is in them. They have a disposition for what is real and true. Okay, the truth. And they are, in fact, always listening for it. And it is the hearing of the truth that defines who these, who these, these sheep are. It defines who they are. It is the hearing of what is true. that They hear this what is true, and it calls them out of the world to Jesus. Peter said, to whom shall we go? Only you have the words of life. Yeah. Peter already figured this out. Uh, uh, when Jesus speaks, he can only tell the truth. <laughs> He can only tell the way things really are. You see, Jesus came to testify the truth. He came to testify the realities that exist out there. We don't know what they are if Jesus hadn't to come. Everyone else has, has come speaking of themselves. They're thieves and robbers, Jesus said. Jesus came to tell the truth about God the Father. And he came to tell us the truth about heaven and hell and Lucifer and Satan. He came to tell us the truth about mankind in this world. He came to testify to the truth concerning all of these realities. That's what Jesus is talking to. Jesus once told the religious leaders, but now you seek to kill me, yeah. a man that had told you the truth, Amen. which I've heard from God. Amen. And to the same group, he said, why do you not understand my speech? Yeah. Even because you cannot hear my word. Yeah. Okay. The truth was not in them. Jesus said, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. They hear the voice of Jesus. That's what they do. These individuals, well, they, they, they belong to the truth. They, and because they, they, because they belong to Jesus, you see. When they hear Jesus speaking, they hear truth being communicated. Nothing else but the truth. When they are drawn, they are drawn to Jesus. They are the ones who are of the truth. All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out, Jesus said. No man can come to the Father, Jesus said, except the Father which hath sent me, draw him, and I'll raise him up in the last day. Amen. You know, it's Jesus who said, those who seek shall find. 
Those who ask, it shall be given, and those who knock, it shall be opened unto them. For there are those who are seeking. There's those asking. There's people actually knocking. They are. And why are they seeking, asking? They're, they're actually after the truth. That's what they're doing is seeking and asking and knocking. They're after the truth. Light and truth together in the same thought. John 3, 20, 21. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the life. Light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light that his deeds may be made manifest, yes. that they are wrought in God. Yes. Now the saints of God, brethren, we are the, we belong to the truth. Amen. We are the pillow and ground of the truth. We've been saved by the word of truth. And this same truth that's in us now, this truth that's in us now, it will continue to be with us forever. 2 John 2, 1. Paul writing to the Thessalonians, I know you're familiar with this account. Paul tells him, remember I told you before the Lord returns, he's trying to correct something that they heard. He said, before the Lord returns, there's going to be a remarkable falling away. Spiritual. And this falling away will pave the way. This falling away will pave the way, will be the cause for the sin of man to be, uh, the, the man of sin to be revealed. He called him the, the son of perdition, the son of uh, man of destruction. In this event, the falling away Actually, we believe this falling away has already taken place. It's been going on for some time. And the intensity has just increased. And the falling has become greater. But this falling away that Paul's talking about that long, it's been going on. And, uh, and we're now looking for this man. Actually, right now, we're looking for this man of sin to appear. And this man of destruction. We're looking for this. We're not ignorant about it. We're talking about a falling away from the truth. It's Paul, that's what Paul's talking about. A falling away from Jesus Christ himself. In this period of time when the wicked one shall be revealed, he will come with uh, the very power of Satan to deceive and mislead, the likes of which the saints has never seen before. He will use all kinds of miracles, signs of deception, the scripture says, and evil works. He'll use all these to deceive those who do not have a love of the truth. Okay? Verse 12 it says, a love of the truth that would save them. For this reason, God will send them a powerful delusion so they will believe the lie. Then all, who will, all who have not believed the truth but have taken pleasure in unrighteousness will be condemned, the scriptures say. Now this is how it's going to end, brethren, uh -huh. for those who have not received a love for the truth. Those who have not cling, made it a purposeful thing to cling to Jesus Christ. Amen. They will be deceived. But those men, those men who have who've purposed themselves to cling to the truth, have a love for the truth, to cling to the Lord, will not be condemned. They will not be deceived. When the greatest of deceptions pour out, brother, it will be the truth. It will be the love for the truth that will save us because we will not be led away and deceived. We'll be determined, you see, to hold, hold fast to the Lord and hold fast to the things that the Lord has said. We will not be swayed. So, brethren, I, this morning I just want to call you to these things that uh, what we have in Christ Jesus, he brings to us the realities of the way things are. He brings to us the truth. So this morning, Amen. let that be an encouragement to you um, that we have Christ Jesus and we just, we just uh, you know, if we... Uh, you know, I guess I, the reason I bring these things is because of the, the way things are currently. You know, we uh, we want to make sure that we're steadfast and that Amen. we got our head on straight Amen. in Amen. terms of what is what is real and what's not real. Amen. And if there's any kind of question, things become vague, then you look to Jesus Amen. and you, we keep Him in the forefront. And so, with this, I'll uh, I'll turn it back over.